Today, we shall be looking at the form of Shiva as Dakshina Murti, which is a very popular representation of Shiva. Let us start with the term Dakshina Murti itself. The term Dakshina could mean right, as in left and right, or could even mean the south, the north and the south. Dakshina Murti is Dakshina Abhimukha Murti the one that is facing the south, the murti that is facing the south, the form that is facing the south. So what does that mean? What does the south direction indicate? The south is the direction of yama. The south is the direction of death. So Dakshina Abhimukha Murti indicates the murti who is facing death, who is coming face to face with death who is confronting death and hence transcending it. So Dakshina Murti is the form of Shiva that is confronting death and helping us transcend death. So Dakshina Murti is the form of a Guru who is helping us confront death and transcend it. That is why even in the temples, in the Shiva temples especially, if you go around the Shiva temples, you will find different representations of Shiva uh, consecrated in different directions. And Dakshina Murti will be the form of Shiva that is always placed facing the south. That is Dakshina Abhimukha Murti. It can also be Dakshina Amurti. That is, it is facing the south, but Amurti. There is no form. It is a formless state of Shiva. That means it is the Brahman itself. It is Shiva as Brahman itself, which is helping us face death and confront it and making us immortal or moving us towards immortality, towards Amritatva. So this is the concept or significance of Dakshinamurti. Dakshinamurti is regarded as it is the form of Shiva as the Parama Guru, is Loka Guru. Shambho Loka Guru Madhiya Mahatam Saukhyopadesham Guru, says Acharya Shankara in the Shivanam Dalahari. So he is a Loka Guru. The form of Dakshina Murti can also be considered as the form of Sadashiva, because Sadashiva is also that form of Parameshwara, which is the form of a Guru. Sadashiva Anugrahada comes in the Ladita Sahasranama. That is, the Divine Mother as Sadashiva, as the consort of Sadashiva, is Anugrahada, is the giver of Anugraha, is the one who graces, who blesses. That is the form of Guru. So Dakshina Murti can also be considered as a form of Sadashiva. That is why in the Guru Parampara, we always say Sadashiva Samarambham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Padyantam in the Dvaita Guru Parampara. So it is always Sadashiva who is the beginning of the Vedanta Guru Parampara. So these are the various aspects of Dakshinamurti. Now coming to the story behind Dakshinamurti, we find in the Puranas the story that once the Brahma Kumaras Sanaka, Sanandana, Sanatana, San, Sanat Kumara, they wanted, they were born itself as Brahmatyanis. They were born itself as Vairagins, dispassionate people, even as they were born out of the mind of Brahma. So they were not ready to do any, any sort of creation which Brahma wanted them to. And they were all the, already on the path of Nivritti. They were on the Nivritti Marga. So they could not be brought to the Pravritti Marga. But on the Nivritti Marga, on the path towards realization, they wanted a guru. They were in search of a guru. 
and Brahma they did not find to be the right Guru because Brahma was engaged in creation in all materialistic aspects. So they did not find Brahma to be their right Guru. They went to Vishnu. Vishnu was lying on the uh, Adi Shesha and Lakshmi was pressing his feet. They also did not find this imagery to be fit for the kind of Guru they were expecting who could give them the Brahma Jnana. They went to Kailasa. In Kailasa, Parameshwara is sitting with Parvati. He is performing the Tandava Nritya. They didn't feel this also to be the right person or the right individual from whom they could receive the Upadesha. And they left, even Kailasa. So then Parvati Devi tells Parameshwara that you must give them the Upadesha. So Parameshwara says, they have not even asked me. They have assumed that I will not be able to give the Upadesha because I seem to be a samsari and they have already left. So Parvati Devi tells Parameshwara, it is the duty of the Guru to go in the form that the Shishya desires, not expect the Shishya to come to the terms of the Guru. We know that they are the right Shishyas. They are pakwis. They are mature to be given the Upadesha. So you must now go in the form that they desire as a guru and give them upadesha. As Sanaka Sanandana Sanatana Sanatkumara were traveling back, they suddenly see a beautiful visual, a visual of a huge tree. Okay, a visual of a huge tree under the tree, under the Vatavriksha, it is a Vatavriksha, under that Vatavriksha, they find a yuva, a young Brahmachari. The young Brahmachari is seated with one leg folded and one leg below and chin mudra. In chin mudra and half eyes closed and in dhyana. They suddenly this visual appeals to them so much and the samidhya is so heavy. They get drawn to that place and they go and approach the yuva and ask to be given the Brahmopadesha. It is said that for one year this Yuva kept giving Brahmopadesha, was giving Upadesha to the Brahma Kumaras and they were constantly asking questions. The Upadesha used to come, they used to ask questions, clarifications, doubts. Again, uh, clarification answers used to come, again doubts. So for one year it went on like this. Then the Yuva decided that this is not going to work. And all of a sudden, the Yuva just went into Maunastiti, complete silence. The moment the Yuva went into complete silence, Maunastiti into Samadhi, all the Brahma Kumaras also got drawn towards that Samadhi and they also went into that meditative trance. And in that state, all their questions and clarifications were answered and they were getting to the, they went on to the realized state. They knew, they got the Brahmopatesha then. This is the form of Shiva as Dakshinamurti sitting under the Vatavriksha as a Yuva giving the Brahmopadesha to the Brahma Kumaras who are seated beside him. This is the form that you see on the left. The Vatavriksha, the Yuva sitting with the Chin Mudra and the four Brahma Kumaras sitting beside him. Chitram Vatataror Mule Chitram. This visual is what? Vatataror Mule Vridha Shishyaha Guru Yuvaha. The Shishyas are Vridhas, Brahma Kumaras, but the Guru is Yuva. Gurus to Maura Vyakyanam, Shishyas to Chinna Samshayaha. The Guru went into Mauna and he started explaining and giving the Upadesha through Mauna. Shishyas to Chinna Samshayaha. All their doubts vanished away. Mauna Vyakya Prakadita. Parabrahmatattvam Yuvanam. Mauna Vyakya Prakatita Parabrahmatattvam. He what he gave is Brahmopatesha, the Parabrahmatattvam. Bhuishtante Vasadrishiganaihi Avritam Brahmanishtaihi. Surrounded by Brahmanishtas, surrounded by the realized souls, all of them seeking to know the uh, great Brahmopatesha. Acharyendam. Karakalita Ananda Murtim. 
స్వాత్మారామం ముక్తవదనం దక్షిణామూర్తి మీడే ఇది ఆచార్యేంద్రం ఆచార్యేంద్ర ఆచార్యాస్ ఆఫ్ ఆచార్యాస్ కర కలిత చిన్ముద్రం ఆనందమూర్తిం హిస్ ఆనందమూర్తి చిన్ముద్రం చిన్ముద్రం ఆనందమూర్తిం ఆత్మారామం ద వన్ హూ రెవెల్స్ ఇన్ ది ఆత్మన్ ద సెల్ఫ్ ముదిత వదనం హ్యాపీ స్మైలింగ్ ఫేస్ ప్లెసెంట్ ఫేస్ దక్షిణామూర్తి మీడే ఐ వర్షిప్ సచ దక్షిణామూర్తి so this is one story behind the appearance of dakshina murti there is another story that comes in the bhagavata purana after the episode of sati dehatyaga and daksha adhvara daksha yagna adhvara and daksha being beheaded and all those things so after daksha is beheaded there is no prajapati so all the devas along with brahma they the devas go to brahma and say there is no prajapati you know what do we do there is no ruler it has become anarchy so brahma says we have no other choice but to go to parameshwara but they are afraid to go to parameshwara because parameshwara is in that state the distressed state where his he has lost his wife sati has done dehatyaga and daksha is the cause for that and so much has happened so now they are all afraid to how to go to parameshwara you know if he opens his third eye and he burns everybody then they are all gone so they are going slowly towards kailasa to see what is the state in kailasa but as they approach kailasa and as, as they approach the mahayoga peetham that is the place where parameshwara is there as they are approaching that place they find an amazing silence and shanti sanidhyam and as they approach there they find that again seated under a banyan tree parameshwara is seated in the same posture of a dakshina murti and he is giving brahma padesha to the brahma kumaras to narada and various brahmanishtas are standing there and he is giving brahma padesha the same parameshwara who was mad with anger at the death of his wife in a few in some time itself there is an automatic transformation where he has composed himself and gone into the brahmasthiti and now he is giving brahma padesha to the brahmanishtas so that is another great lesson that parameshwara teaches us is that all the sorrows and troubles in life will come but being established in the self is the only ultimate reality so we have to transform ourselves from all those sorrows and distress and come back to composition compose ourselves and be established in the self so the shloka in the bhagavata purana says tasmin maha yogamaye mukshu sharane suraha dadrushu shivam asinam they see shiva seated tyakta amarsham ivantakam having left all the amarsha all the disgust the anger everything is gone sanandana adhyehi maha siddhehi shantai sam shanta vigraham we surrounded by sanandana adhyehi sanaka sanandanas the siddhas all of them are surrounding him and he is appearing as shanta vigraham upasyamanam sakhya cha bhartra buhyaka rakshasam vidya tapo yoga patham astitam tam adhishwaram he is the lord of vidya tapa yoga all of that he is sitting as that lord of all of this charantam vishva sukhrutam vatsalyat loka mangalam he is sitting there as the vishva sukhrut as the friend of the entire universe and he is sitting there for the mangalam for the goodness of the entire universe lingam cha tapasa bhishtam basma danda jatajinam he is wearing he is smeared his body with bhasma and he is full of jata angena sandhya bhra rucha chandralekam cha bibratam his body is like shining gold it is shining like gold upavishtam he seated sarbhamayyam brishyam brahma sanatanam on the darbha on the darbha grass he seated naradaya pravochantam pricchate shrinvatam satam he is giving the upadesha and other things to other brahmanishtas like narada krutvorau dakshine savyam padapadam cha januni he is placed with one leg on the top one leg below and his hand on the janu on the knees bahum prakoshte akshamalam asinam tarkamudraya one hand is holding dakshamala and one of them is holding the tarkamudra tam brahma nirvana samadhi maashritam vipashritam girisham yoga kaksham 
ಸಲೋಕಪಾಲಾಮೇಶ್ವರಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ as that grahastha how he has composed himself from all the sorrows of life and and pulled himself into his self and seated there as dakshinamurti this is the other form or this is the other story behind the form of dakshinamurti and that also explains the brahmanishtas who are surrounding dakshinamurti so these are the stories behind the uh, appearance of dakshinamurti uh, on the right you find this is the form of dakshinamurti you find in alangudi alangudi is one of the navagraha kshetrams for guru and there the form of guru there is no other form of guru other than dakshinamurti dakshinamurti itself is regarded as guru as the navagraha guru and brahaspati and it is venerated there there are other forms of dakshinamurti also that we see you have yoga dakshinamurti that some in some uh, representations is put as a yoga patta in some representations as you can see on the left most image he is having one leg below one leg down in a slight virasana posture there is a veena dakshina murti where dakshina murti is, is represented with the veena in the hand you have various representations of that which you find in the other two sculptures and the last is the form of dakshina murti that you find in a temple called as the tirunalam gode in kerala this form of dakshinamurti is also very unique where the form of dakshinamurti is carved on the cave it is a it is a carving of dakshinamurti that is there in the cave and it is a very different form of dakshinamurti who seated in a gambhira posture with his four hands holding the different ayudas so these are the day various forms of dakshinamurti that you see today we shall be ending this episode with a song on dakshinamurti by vidushi shreya dakshi
ಪ್ರವೃತ್ತೆ ಸುಖದರ ಪ್ರವೃತ್ತಿ ಸ್ವಜ್ಞಾನ ನಿವೃತ್ತಿ ಸ್ವಗುರು ಪತೆ ಸ್ವಾನುಭೋ ಗತೃತ್ತೆ ಕ್ಷೀಣ I hope all of you enjoyed the session today. Until we meet next, Namaskara.